the victim was severely dehydrated at the time of death. He died of shock caused by lack of oxygen in the body. Please, my baby! Welcome in residence. However, in recent times, this image has been tarnished by a series of brutal attacks against the residents of this one. People did something. Tell anyone you little slut. Hi guys, uh, I'm Jason Wright from Science Studios, and with obviously White Bus here for Horror on the Sea. Welcome to the festival. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, just watched the you. film. Very very good. Some really amazing cinematography in there as well, and some really good acting. So well done. Thanks. Um, is it your first film? Yeah, it is. Do you know about the budget? Uh, you said something about a thousand pounds. Under under a thousand. Under a thousand pounds. That's quite. It's, a, it's a actually feat. it's it's sort of between seven and eight hundred pounds the entire budget. Unbelievable! How do you do that? Uh, <laughs> a lot, a lot <laughs> of community support. You see, the story is about a local legend that's very close to people's hearts. Okay. And people from Staffordshire are just really kind of generous and fun. And if you're doing something interesting, they'll pitch in and help you. So massive community effort. Did you raise the funds on something like Kickstarter or Indiegogo? No, no, or? we didn't raise the funds. No, we, we you know, uh, have second jobs and things like that. Nobody okay. else paid for it. So, so you did it all by yourselves? Yeah, so That's the director paid for the bits that needed to be paid for. That was Ray Wilkes, wasn't it? Yeah. And he's a good director to work for. I'm not guessing too much of his Yeah, films, do you know really what? He, he was making shorts. He makes lots and lots of shorts. Yeah. And I've been nagging him for years to make... <laughs> a couple of other people have nagged him as well to make a feature film. Okay. And, and yeah, he just did. He just said, right, I'm making a feature film and it's about this and... And off he went. It's nice to see it out because a lot of people say mm. going to make a feature film and it never comes out. So yeah. this is here now. Uh, under a £1,000, which is an amazing budget, by the mm -hmm. way, because not many people can do it for more than five, six grand at the lowest. Mm. So this must be one of the lowest I've, and I've heard of, literally. Yeah. Um, you guys have all starred in it and stuff. So tell us a bit mm. about your roles. Do you want to go first? <laughs> I play a nasty witch hunter. Really? <laughs> no, no, I'm nasty. As you can see, I'm, I'm no. quite sort of you know, widened. And how did, you, I mean, how did you get into it, first of all? Is it just... Uh, well, it's quite funny. I was... I love horror movies, and I was just someone had mentioned have a look on, uh, I think it was YouTube, uh, to have a look at this trailer for me. So I had a look at it, and uh, I looked at the director and gave him a ring and said, "Look, I quite like what you're doing. Is there anything going?" Uh, and that's how I got into it. That's amazing. Isn't it? And obviously, yeah. it's like I say, it's, it's, a, it's really good for it's quite powerful mm, because yeah. it starts slow. Yeah, well, I like, I like, in, I like stories. And I think sort of the British sort of horror industry is is doing really well, mm. but. Uh, the Americans have all the budgets, don't they? Yeah, they do. Which, which makes sort of you know they they end up being blockbusters simply because they they have so many outlets mm. and put it out, whereas the British industry doesn't. I so think it's good to do yeah. something, yeah. Uh, you know, I think we're going to grow as well, obviously. Yeah, so we we're going to get better. So you know, fingers crossed. I mean, I'd say you know this one, uh, this one. Uh, I was waiting to see this one, this one, and the next one. Mm. I'm waiting to see in a minute. The two of them waiting to see all weekend. Yeah. So I'm quite happy. I've actually got in and seen. I'm not being still interviewing out here. Um, so obviously you got this work through through Ray. Um, yeah, I rang, I rang Ray up and said, you know, if there's anything going and and he hands, so. put you in. So good yeah. job there, wasn't it? Because yeah, uh, I'm and, quite like a, you know, as you can see. Yeah, very quiet. Yeah, I, don't, I don't look very wicked, do I? I talk for England, so. <laughs> 
So obviously you've been brought into the film as well. Tell us mm-hmm. a bit about your role and, and how you've been brought into the film. Uh, well, I ended up playing Molly Lee because uh, I just end up in movies every now and again. Um, mm. I was really behind the scenes, so I helped right from the beginning before the film even existed. That's good. Um, and all the way through it, uh, pretty much, and all the publicity and everything afterwards. So I've done loads of stuff that you can't actually see. The only bit that you can actually see is me playing Molly Lee. I've got loads of credits there, though. <laughs> Tons of credits going down. Well, there's only three of us. There's only uh, three crew. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So, that's yeah, so... we, d- we didn't really know what to call ourselves because we know the director, but he's also the script writer and loads of other things. Yeah. And the sound guy is also the stunt guy and loads of other things. And, and you know, I've, I've done costumes and, and kind of... Um, finding people to do stuff and yeah and that's that one of the hardest thing. parts as well yeah. find the right cast and we, we had this yeah. conversation with pat higgins earlier on and a few other directors as well very very mm-hmm. key and obviously you've been brought into this as well um and you've got quite a unique story how you got into this as well haven't you yes i i i, I appear on a tv show called psychic today which okay. has been running for 10 years i've been involved with that for 10 years so i was just minding my own business uh, <laughs> appearing on the appearing on the show doing what i do doing what i do psychic readings and I uh, got asked by Lily a very interesting story. I, I hadn't seen a script for this. Yeah. I I liked the ideas. The more that Lily mm. was talking to me about the film, the more I got a sense of this is really interesting. And I was just staying at a hotel, and then you came around with just like you know, just like a tablet, yeah, you know, and just it said no script. Um, you got two minutes. Was it two said, minutes? You I just quite, said, be creepy, John. Just be creepy. <laughs> so there be, it is. Creepy. be creepy into this um, tablet, you know, iPad t- tablet. And, um, well, I must have been creepy. You, you were very, <laughs> very, <laughs> creepy. Right. very creepy. Thank you, thank you George. No, I'll take director, that as a compliment. The director right. said, find really somebody creepy. creepy, find somebody that's got a following. Because yeah. what we did with the film to help promote it is we, we went for... Um, people that were, were good actors and things yeah. like that, but also people that promote themselves or have a following because that helps to promote the film. Absolutely. So when you've got somebody who does the promotion and also does the casting as well, they're going to cut their work in half by doing that. Yeah. So we went for John because he's incredibly popular on his show and also because he's you're dead creepy and scary when you're in that mood. So, you should probably um, use that on one of the extras on the DVD when it comes mm. out on the Blu-ray. That might be quite a good one. <laughs> Show as well, obviously. Yeah. That'd be quite good. Is there anything, for, you know, from obviously from the film set, you guys all worked together for quite a long time now. I don't know how, how long did it take to do the film? Oh, God, it took about two years. I see, and that's yeah. that's a good thing. And I hear a lot mm. of films take like five weeks. I'm like, really? Mm. You know, so that's a, a good planning development, going to production, took your mm. time doing it, which is really, really good. Yeah. Um, Anything interesting on the set that happened? Anything spooky? Oh, loads, you know? loads of freaky stuff. Tell us a couple stuff. of things. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? There's loads of freaky coincidences. Um, the reason the director decided to do the film, um, he had lots and lots of ideas, and loads of people sent him scripts, and loads of people sent him really cliched, boring rubbish. And <laughs> so, you know, some people like zombies. I'm not particularly thrilled with zombies, neither is the director. So people were sending him scripts for zombie films and things like that. And he thought, I wonder what it would be like to do a local legend, Molly Lee. Yeah. And he wrote a few ideas down and then binned it. And then um, and and started concentrating on something else. And then he woke up in the middle of the night with Molly Lee on his chest, looking really? into his face, awesome. crapped himself, and kind of realised that I'll make your film now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there was that. Cool. Also, uh, you know the song by Julia Dowler, Black Heart. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, that lady, she lives in Burslem, or she lives near Burslem, or something. Okay. But she walks through because Molly Lee's grave is real. You can actually go and see it. The police have to go and protect it every Halloween. Really? Yeah, they have to protect That's it from kids and vandals <laughs> and things. Um, so Molly Lee's grave is actually at a right angle to everybody else's grave. Okay. And the story goes that she was dug up and, and the grave was moved around to stop her haunting the entire village. So this lady, Julia, this musician, she walks past Molly's grave quite a lot. She's quite interested in Molly Lee. So she found out this uh, film was going on. Because yeah. we made a big deal of it and loads of people came forward to help. Awesome. And she just sat down and just wrote a song off the top of her head, sent it to us, yeah. and we were we were absolutely shit faced on rum, and we were <laughs> <laughs> me and the director we were What's editing <laughs> that, the scene where um, Mercy Jess in the film uh, gets beaten up in the alleyway, you know, and they're all dressed yeah, as old yeah. ladies. Uh, we were editing that, and we were just tweaking it a little bit, and we got this song through, and we went, oh, should we listen to it? And we decided to put it over the top and okay. see 
uh, see how it fitted, and it fitted perfectly. Yeah. And we cried like babies. It's a weird it was, one. Yeah, it was so got, freaky. When we got to that part of the film, I was like, listen, and there's, 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 there's no sound, just this song. And I was thinking, mm. is this about to end or something? And it didn't, yeah. and it carried on. Because I thought you were just going into a, a very subtle ending. And I thought, no, there's more action to come, I'm sure. And mm. then it just carried on. It's really weird. It's something I hadn't seen before, so very, very good. It, yeah, it was pretty yeah. weird. But we put the song over the top, and it fitted perfectly. Yeah, it, it, really, it, it does was, work. It, it, made, it gave us chills, you know? Yeah, it was ever really, so really weird. Work. And she said she was just moved to sit down and write it after seeing the, a clip. Oh, bless her. I mean, again, music's very hard to get in and composing for music and scoring is really, really difficult yeah. as well. So, getting the right score on the right film mm. is quite a feat in engineering itself. Yeah. Uh, editing is also another thing that I've, I've watched and follow quite a lot. And again, your editing is really, really good. It's a nice, nice snap, beginning nice and slow, and mm. then there's these snapshots. And then that's the bit that makes you jump. <laughs> you know, yeah. What was that? And that's kind of the bits when you see on a big screen. On small screens, not so big, but on the big ones, it mm. makes you jump. Um, have you guys got anything else coming up you know, in the near future? Something else you can bring to the festival next year, maybe, or something like that? Oh, you're on? involved in a few things, aren't you? Yeah, but they're, they're mainly TV, so we're doing another This Is England. Okay. 1990, hopefully. You can plug that now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> plug that we'll now. We're watching well, that. <laughs> we don't know whether... And uh, Paddington. You know, okay. Yeah, which comes out, I think, next November, that'll be really Okay, that's pretty really cool. Mm-hmm. And yourself, you got anything coming up? I'm just working on the next script with the director. Okay, so that's under wraps, obviously. So it's yeah, <laughs> it's it's kind of it's very different to this. It's very slick and very stylish and set in London, but that's all I can say. Okay, well we'll talk to you later mm-hmm. on when, when it comes nearer to the time when you can release the stuff. That'd be really cool. Oh, that and yourself, are you coming into anything else yet? Or uh, yes, so there are a number of things planned for uh, for for this year, and I continue to be very very busy on Psychic Today. Yeah, well, I'll say we haven't started following that, but we might yeah. do now. <laughs> but guys, thank you very much for spending some time. Thank I know you. you're on a really tight schedule. No. It's a really good film, and we'll promote it as much as possible now. Oh, thank so you. So thank you very much for bringing it to Horror on Sea, and uh, you're more than welcome to come back anytime you wish. So please thank come you. back whenever you want. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. And yourself. Thank you. And you. Thank you very much as well. Thank Cheers. You.